Hi everyone, hope you're doing well. Right, so let's take a look at this Eddie Cochran guitar solo from I Almost Lost My Mind. Um, if I remember correctly, this is um, one of his sessions from, from around 56. And um, it's, there's some great examples of Eddie's guitar playing in... Um, uh, there's Blue Suede Shoes, Long Tall Sally, the kind of sort of jazzy, uh, That's My Desire. And this, uh, I Almost Lost My Mind, there's some great... Um, sort of solo ideas in it, so definitely um, worth taking a look. So we're in the key of A. And I'll, I'll take a look at the, uh, the sort of rhythm part in a, in a separate class. There's a nice little sort of riff we can sort of, you know, use over the one, four and five chords. So in the key of A, and we're going to start, you know, this is going to be uh, using a lot of these first three strings here for the first part. So I'm going to slide into this little sort of partial A. So really, that's kind of our destination, you know, the second fret's on the, the G and the B. I'm going to slide from the, in the first fret. And I guess by pushing through, that open E's coming through. Give that a bit of a shake. Then we we'll repeat that slide. And now we're going to work our way up to this A. So um, they were on the fourth of the G uh, and third of the B. And again, that kind of, uh, you know, high E string is ringing through a little bit. Move up a semitone and then slide into the into the air. Slide that two times. Bit of a shake. And uh, and that's kind of you know even sort of mirroring the way that we're moving into the air there. So it's even you know small little details like that. And using those sort of passing shapes just to repeat an idea. even descend with that. So this kind of idea on these, you know, whether it's on the three strings using that open E a little bit or just the G and the B. Um, it's something very similar with um, in a, you know, that's all right. Except though we're not really using that sort of fourth, fourth fret sort of passing shape, or even the end of something like sitting in the balcony. Um, we do that. So let's think. Uh, so here we're just using that ascending. Going to slide in again. Now we're going to kind of bounce off this seventh fret on the D. Flatten our third finger, now we're on the seventh of the G and the B. Back to that seventh fret on the D. We're sort of finishing there with our A major position, six on the G, fifth on the B. Back to that seventh on the D. You know this kind of passing shape again, so it's uh, fourth on the G, third on the B. Kind of moving into this, sort of resolving back into this A major, seventh on the D, six on the on the G. Move that down chromatically two frets. Bit of a shape. That's kind of making it more of this kind of dominant sound before we now change to our four chord. It's a great little kind of country sort of thing though from Eddie. Um, you know, 
Oh, so listen, listen, you know, to where he sort of plays it and his dynamics. You know, it's not all sort of one, just sort of one dynamic. There's there's a real um, contour in there. <laughs> little two chromatic sort of drops Bit of a sort of feeling of res resignation just before we move to this four chord and we're going to try and ascend again so uh give a shake there now move to our four chord the d again this little kind of broken idea but using this little motif of the sort of double slide so the third fret of the b second on the e Sliding into that, bit of a shake. This we'll play that again a little bit. This time, cut off before we ascend. So our D again, fifth fret on the E, seventh on the B, and that shape there will just move that up from the third fret. So third on the E, fifth on the B, fourth on the E, sixth on the B. Our destination, fifth on the E, seventh on the B. And again, really sort of pay attention to how he plays that, so, you know, we've got that slide in. And the second, and this next one, this time it's it's much more cut, cut off. And he re there's a real nice way he sort of, he's used the dynamics, as he? So, you know, even this solo, it's a great example of how Eddie was even really, really mature and studying things like that, or, or I'm sure just coming out naturally just by, you know, the way he was copying solos just like anybody. Um, but definitely that kind of um, level of dynamic awareness definitely shows, you know, a, a real mature side to his playing um, at such an early age. Finish on our four chord with this. And that's into our blue scale there, really. So, um, five, seven, five on the E. That's as, the, as we're the remaining time on our four chord as we hit that flat third, the eighth on the high E as we move back to our one chord. Five seven five. Five seven five eight. And five eight on the B, five on the E. Kind of repeat that phrase again. Five, uh, eight, five on the E, eight on the B. So we play that eight on the B, then hammer from the fifth to the eighth, pull off to the fifth on the B. Seven on the G, five on the G. Then these kind of four picked, you know, kind of spat out blues notes. Um, they're not blues notes, it's just the roots of our chord, but I mean, the way it's kind of phrased. Even that the sort of blues phrase, the way you know, listen to the it's not just played so kind of straight, there's a real great sense of phrasing. Now moving to our five chord. So five, seven, five on the beat. Five, seven, 
Five on the B, slide from the seventh to the ninth on the B. The seventh on the E. And then it could be another slide, but I chose to do this kind of hammer on. So hammer from the eighth to the ninth on the B, and seventh again on the high E. And two times on the ninth, ninth on the B. Then the third time we're going to use that to slide down to the seventh on the B. Fifth on the B. Now back to our moving to our four chord. And this kind of bit of a got a bit of a pop this uh, eighth on the E. So eight on the E. Five on the E, eight on the B. Then this hammer pull off. So five, eight, five. So pick five, hammer, pull off to five. Hammer to eight, pull off to five. And then seven on the G. end on the seventh on the G but then we'll go into so to double pick it again pull off to the fifth and seven on the D two times and then we're going to play sort of get into this thing which Eddie, do, Eddie does a lot um, so five on the G now it depends how we might want to play this, uh, depending on which fingers, and it's also about hand size, so I'm not really sure exactly how I'd, any might play this, but... So, uh, Essentially, the first two notes we wanted that fifth and seventh on the G. But um, maybe I'd play with my little finger on this, because of my hand size and the way I want to get this slide in. Um, so as I'm... So I'm just playing that fifth on the G. I'm using my little finger on the seventh of the G. Because now I'm going to sort of, and at the same time, making a bit of a bow with my first finger. Um, this is how I have to compensate, you know, by hand size, really. And so as I... Um, as I move to that fifth on the G, I sort of make that kind of bar. I play the seventh of the G with my little finger. And then, kind of moving it quickly, I'm going to slide from the eighth of the G to the ninth, and at the same time, I want to try and catch the, the fretted B, which is sort of fretted at the fifth and maybe the A a little, the E a little bit. Um, you know, I... I can't, I've kind of I've probably first heard this idea, but not played like that. I guess in um, Cal, from Carl Perkins' Blue Suede Shoes, that kind of thing. You know, in his guitar solos, were your um, because of having bigger hands, you could just fret. You know, that kind of double stop fifth fret on the B and the E. And you know, we got this kind of kind of you know traditional Chuck Berry-ish move. We're kind of bending there on the seventh of the G. And now we could move our fingers up a bit, bend on the eighth. And if we bend on the eighth, we're just really bending up a fret to that E. But the idea is to let some of those, let that, the note you're kind of bending up to start to bleed into the fretted notes. Now having if you've got bigger hands, you could sort of keep that those fretted at the fifth and just you play while well, you're playing there the eighth with your third finger, just play all those and slide up just with your finger. Um, but I can't really get that kind of bleed with um. I just need my fingers a little bit bigger. Um, so, so usually with this kind of thing, I'll compensate and just have to do it with my little finger like that, a bit more of the the bar there. So, uh, uh, 
and then. So, seventh on the G, pick again, pull off to the fifth. And kind of two times on the seventh of the D. So, um, yeah, walk through that slowly. I know that all this sort of last part might have seemed a bit confusing. Um, really want to sort of look at that a bit, in a bit more detail in some other stuff, maybe sort of related to Cal Perkins. Like I say, it's a bit dependent on kind of hand size. I think sort of years ago in a tutorial I did, we'd done some 20, we'd some 20 flight rock ideas in, um, that's kind of the idea. Um, you know, it's not just that. Um, I'll have to revisit that a bit more, but yeah, I'm not sure if Eddie, I'm not sure depending on exact Eddie's hand size or his sort of f flexibility with that, whether he's able to, to just cut it, slide it more Cal Perkins style. I just can't quite get that comfortably word by doing that slide from the eighth. Nah, I just can't really get those fifth frets to ring through, so I have to sort of do more. Or sometimes, um, like before, you could sort of fret the eighth, keep those fretted at the fifth, and bend. Not to be careful not to overbend. Like I say, it's just to get that sort of little bit of bleed from this, which is really just a semitone below. Or fret the eighth and hammer to the ninth. So there's a few sort of ways to look at that. Um, it's not really essential in sort of, you know, the, the grand scheme of things, just to sort of enjoy this solo, you could just at the end... Um, or any, any number of things. For me, a lot of the, the important sort of stuff is really getting to... Um, that kind of stuff. Equally looking at that, well, we did that in D, imagine just two frets up in E. Do the same kind of idea. So give that a try, folks. Um, great little solo. I really love it, and I really love that session with those other tracks, which I'll I'll have to start exploring more. And uh, yeah, certainly I'll make a little tutorial just for the uh, for the rhythm parts of this. Just a nice little riff that's worth getting under the fingers, just sort of um, you know to build up the vocabulary. So um, right, we'll take care, folks, and I'll see you soon. Cheers. <laughs>